Okay, and we're live on YouTube as well. Lucy, you feel free to get started whenever you want. Okay. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. One more time, we shall not be moved. We, we shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. No, 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 they don't. No, no, no. No, 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 small they are going to go. Feel me, feel me, No, no, small they are. The people are united. We shall not be moved. The people are united. We shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. El pueblo, el pueblo está unido. No, no, small verán. El pueblo está unido. No, no, small verán. Como un ardor. Firme. Firme río. No, no, small United in the struggle, we shall not be moved. United in the struggle, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water, we shall not be moved. Unidos en la lucha, no nos moverán. Unidos en la lucha, no nos moverán como un árbol. Firme mucha río, no nos moverán. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not. We shall not be moved just like the tree that's planted by the waters. We shall not be moved. Paz, queremos paz y libertad en este mundo. Paz, queremos paz y libertad en este mundo. Para las niñas en la frontera, queremos paz y libertad. Para las niñas en la frontera, queremos paz y libertad. Paz, queremos paz y libertad en este mundo. Paz, queremos paz y libertad en este mundo. Para los niños en la frontera, queremos paz. And En este mundo. Ya no más hambre, ya no más hambre, ya no más guerra. Queremos paz, 
en esta tierra ya no más hambre, ya no más guerra, queremos paz. En esta tierra, paz, queremos paz, en libertad, en este mundo, paz, queremos paz, en libertad, en este mundo. No más guerra de radiación, no más ideas de exterminación, ya no más guerras con bardación, no más ideas de exterminación. Paz, queremos paz, en libertad, en este mundo. en este mundo We are the One DC Black Workers Center Chorus mm -hmm. and now we're going to turn it over to Gato Bentley okay. Yes Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. This is uh, Gato Martinez. Billy. I want to uh, thank each and every one uh, for turning us on, for participating in this first wonderful and glorious anniversary of the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. Um, I want to uh, express that this is a program that's been in the making for a while. Even though it's one year, we've been working on it a little longer. I want to thank the singers uh, for their wonderful renditions of songs, both in English and in Espanol. Uh, so we're going to move on with the show. And I'd like to um, have this opportunity to as well as just say uh, just a few words about the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. Uh, and that is that even during this pandemic and all the crisis of perfect storm that we have going on, uh, we have persevered and we're gonna take it into the year 2020, 21, 21, 2021, and hopefully expand, have uh, an office space, a physical space, as well as do uh, more readings, songs, uh, just speaking truth to power, each and every way we possibly can use every possible tool in our toolbox of, quite honestly, of liberation and socialism. So uh, let me start off by number one saying, I'd like to read this, and that is that number one, where there is no vision, people will perish. That's Proverbs 29, verse 18. So the vision is our vision of bringing the, the work of Claudia Jones and understand all that sister comment Claudia Jones did, compañera, and make sure that we see in the future, hopefully many, many Claudia Jones uh, in the world today. I am having technical difficulties because the screen I'm, I'm supposed to read things from is being worked on as we speak. But I do want, is it, can you, can you, okay. So it seems like the screen is ready. Uh, I would like really not to waste any time at all in introducing a, a wonderful compañero. He's from Nicaragua, yay. And he's from Costa Atlantica, Nicaragua. And uh, I lived there I don't know, maybe he may be on and off, and had a wonderful experience and got to meet, interesting enough, some of the comrades Francisco Campbell's uh, family members and got to play with some of the guys. And uh, so this is a wonderful opportunity for me to say, you know, I'm very proud of Francisco Compañero. I'm so glad to see you and that you're well and that we who have similar are all well during these times of uh, crisis 
of unproportionate uh, amounts throughout the world. And I'd like to just read something about Mr. Francisco Campbell. Uh, and that is that, this, and this, I gotta tell you something about Francisco. If you didn't know it, I believe I nicknamed him the singing ambassador. He can sing like Harry Belafonte. This is, so we, we gotta all tap on that, 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 that obviously talent as well of his wonderful spirit. So since, 19, uh, since 2010, the ambassador from Nicaragua to the United States has been Francisco uh, Campbell. And I don't know how to say his middle name, Obidella. And uh, um, last name is Hooker as well, Campbell Hooker. He's an experienced diplomat and an academic who previously served in the Nicaraguan embassy in the early 1980s. Uh, the Nicaraguan uh, opposition to the Somoza regime and the victory of the, San, the Frente Sandinista um, has laid on the scene that he's an activist. He's with the National Liberation Front, and of course, that's a good thing. And so there's this F A S E L E N, and uh, which is, uh, is the main, you know, the main opposition to the United States corrupt regime that they had in this Anastasia Somoza, and I think it was one of the United States uh, um, presidents when asked, that, uh, did you know that uh, Anastasia Somoza is, is uh, they use the word SOB, son of a bitch. And that, that president responded, yes, I know that, but he's out son of a bitch. And so <laughs> I'd like to bring to you, without further ado, also, y'all want to say that uh, he also said there's ambassador Zimbabwe. Started that from 1986 to 1990. And uh, Zimbabwe he held uh, the presidency of the non-aligned movement. And Campbell's also currently ambassador where he was then, to Tanzania, Angola, and Zimbabwe. So very principled, he's done a lot of work in, in the mother continent in Africa. And that's something we should also be proud of, to have him uh, Grace with us and uh, had this opportunity to hear him uh, speak on the subject of Nicaragua. So without further ado, I'd like to please uh, ask you to uh, put your hands together for the Copenhagen Francisco. Thank you very much, my good friend. Always a pleasure to see you. And we hope to, to welcome you again to Nicaragua sometime soon, in Bluefield, where you have many friends. It is indeed a great honor and privilege to welcome each and every one of you this evening to the first anniversary celebration of the Claudia Jones School for Political education. The Nicaragua Embassy had the opportunity to host the launching of this extraordinary initiative last year and was prepared to do so again this year were it not for the restrictions and protocols in place due to the coronavirus pandemic and other unforeseen circumstances. We are, however, happy to join you virtually in this celebration that we are sure will continue to take place in the month of February, many more years into the future. This event is especially important and satisfying to us Nicaraguans for your Black History Month coincides with our commemoration in the month of May, of February, dedicated to the remembrance and honoring of two of our greatest national heroes, who in their distinct ways contributed richly to the forging of the Nicaraguan nation 
that is now known throughout the world as a people fierce in the defense of self-determination, national sovereignty, and independence, and willing to extend the hand of friendship in solidarity with those countries struggling to achieve these shared dreams and aspirations. In the month of February, Nicaraguans commemorate the passing of Ruben Darío and Augusto Sandino, known in history as the General of Free Men, now called General of Free Men and Women. In a belated yet rightly deserved acknowledgement of the role of women in the long and difficult struggle against foreign intervention. In the late 1920s and early 30s, General Sandino was the force that rallied the Nicaraguan people around the banner of national dignity and pride, fueling the fervor that succeeded in expelling the US military forces that for many years had been occupying our country. In February 1934, General Sandino was assassinated in a plot orchestrated by representatives of the United States government. But his legacy lives on in the consciousness of the Nicaraguan people. His example nurtured the Sandinista National Liberation Front that 45 years later succeeded in overthrowing the Somoza family dictatorship, which was created, imposed, and supported by successive US administrations, both Democrat and Republican. Whereas General Sandino resorted to the force of arms in defense of the dignity of the nation, the weapon unleashed by Ruben Darío were, were his words and pen. Born in Nicaragua, the poet Ruben Darío, through innate talent and skills, acquired early international acclaim and was honored with the designation Prince of Spanish Literature and Father of Hispanic American Modernism. Aside from being a poet, Darío was also a highly respected journalist and diplomat, representing Nicaragua and other Latin American countries in several European states, including Spain, France, Italy and the United Kingdom. In his poetry and diplomatic career, Ruben Darío heralded the rights and dignity of the Nicaraguan people, reiterating time and time again the justness and beauty inherent in the will to fight against foreign intervention in Nicaragua. The life and legacy of these two Nicaraguan national heroes, Sandino and Darío, is preserved by the present generation and transmitted to future generations as examples of true patriots willing to embrace the struggle and to sacrifice for a cause greater than themselves a free and prosperous Nicaragua, occupying its rightful place among the nations of the world. The preservation and transmission of our history is of fundamental importance to the success of our struggles. 
This is why we fully embrace as our own the work undertaken by the Claudia Jones School for Political Education and its association with Black History Month. Efforts such as this ensures that the torch passes from one generation to the next, shining brightly on the path that in the end leads to the attainment of the most cherished dreams and aspirations of our peoples. Freedom, justice, and the opportunity to thrive in the country we call home. Once again, Congratulations to the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. Thank you so much, comrade. Uh, it was good to hear you. Always a wonderful honor to, uh, to hear your voice. And um, the next we are going to cover, okay, next we're gonna have um, Compañero Monsim. He's going to talk uh, on the road of Claudia Jones School for Political Education. Thank you. Congress, good evening. This is Mohsin Siddiq. I'm on behalf of the Claudia Jones School for Political Education Collective. Greetings and welcome to our guests, friends, and comrades to the celebration of the first anniversary of the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. We are honored by the presence of Ambassador Francisco Campbell of Nicaragua, and we are delighted to by the presence of Ms. Elise Bryant, President of the Coalition of Labor Union, uh, Union Women, as our, she is our main, main speaker. We are also celebrating the birthday of Claudia Jones. She was born on February 21st, 1915 in Trinidad and Tobago. When she was young, the family moved to the US. She became a journalist and an activist, joined the Young Communist League in 1936 when she was 21 years old, after being very impressed by the work the Communist Party did on behalf of the Scots Pro 9. She was a feminist and a black nationalist, <clears throat> adopting the Jim Jones quote as self-protective disinformation, unquote. Due to the political persecution of the communists in the US, she was deported in 1955 and subsequently lived in the United Kingdom. She founded the Britain's ma first major black newspaper, the West Indian Gazette, in 1958. She had written extensively and was given the title Left of Karl Marx by her comrade. The Claudia Jones School for Political Education is a grassroots organization committed to the, to the enriching the political perspective of our Metro Washington DC community. It strives to be a force in the fight against injustices of, of a racist ruling class, engaged in the relentless class war against the working poor, whose labor is the source of capital and that is used against the same workers in further in their exploitation. During the first year of our existence, we have organized a number of events focused on fighting racism, workers' rights, defending workers' rights, rights of women, even, even the poetry, poetry reading even, that included participants from Nigeria to UK. We are working on a program for the coming year that will include structured courses in political economy, philosophy, politics, history, as well as lecture streams, et cetera, and from the progressive point of view and various cultural events. Please make sure you sign with your email address, so at the send us your email address so that we can keep you informed of our program. Once again, welcome to the celebration. We are truly humbled by you business today. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Compañero. Um, Mohsin Sadiq. And next, next we'd like to uh, bring up someone who uh, you may not be uh, familiar with, but uh, actually I, I've known her for a good minute and uh, I'd say for about three years, and uh, she's become very political over that time, uh, going to things for the uh, for 
for the, for the school, uh, going for things for the party, and she's real stand up uh, individual, but she's very also spiritual. And um, I like to welcome to you my fiance, uh, Sister Deborah Johnson. Hey everybody. Okay, I'd like to say this, as God has said, I am spiritualist. Um, I am an empath as well. I, I feel things and I do believe that Miss Claudia Jones is here with us in spirit, for I have invoked her to be here with us and celebrate. So here we go. The spoken word is she will not be forgotten. Great Claudia Jones. There is no substitute. Power. The lady with the lamp, the Statue of Liberty, stands in the New York Harbor. Her back is squarely turned against the United States. How symbolic. It's no wonder, no considering what she would have looked upon today. She would weep if she had to face this way. She was a woman of truth, with uncompromised integrity. She had the audacity to speak for those without a voice. She became a voice for all people. I am speaking of the late, great Claudia Jones. I'm talking about Claudia. You didn't know you did. For she was a woman of unspeakable gifts and greatness. She is my hero. Born Claudia Van Comerba from the Port of Spain, Trinidad. 21st of February, 1915. At the right age of nine, her family migrated to the United States in the heart of Harlem. Was it done? I think not. It was befitting. But she was a force of nature. Her mother died five years later, leaving her and her father to seek employment. Living in a healthy America, and in, in a healthy America, without health care for all. She was struck with tuberculosis. Due to poor conditions, the irreparably damaged her lungs and plagued her for life. And it was time she began to write a common call, only a comments for a common call. I'm sorry, a common publication. She will not be forgotten. Sending her forget me nots. Well, I don't remember you, Miss Jones. We're celebrating International Day, the struggle for peace, women, women's unity against exception to the monopolist rulers, the Smith Act of 1951, code of blood order, suicidal atomic weapons, developments never to see the masses to be passed. Consciousness rising, finding organizations supporting Scotch World War. She joined the Young Communist League of America. Sister Congress Jones became the executive secretary for the Women's Commission of the party. She was nephew to that. Forgive me, Mr. Jones. I always remember you, company of consciousness. Excuse us as to how triple oppression disgraces all races, class, and gender, and wants us to surrender. You, Ms. Jones, shows an anti-imperialist united front coalition to help the voiceless. We're sending you forgiveness and solidarity forever. I always remember you. You were there back in the days of Jim Crow, Cross Burns. Everything soft land that they attempted to disband. You must go out the land. We want people's democracy, not their democracy. You will not forget. You will never forget. City will forget you. Thank you, dear sister. I'm going to touch flights in the Eugene Ward Carter, Knight, the chief of Birmingham's Department of Public Safety Error to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Numerous acts of interrogation, Ku Klux Klan system, I'm sorry, systemic, when Jim Crow was everything, except it didn't die with that error. We're still living with their idea of law and order that still has us in bondage. She would not have forgotten, we're telling her forget me that. Claudia Jones is fighting for socialism, internationalism, and activism. As a journalist and radical free thinker, she became head of the ball in activism and campaigning to the rights of women, African Americans, and all 
others of color. In 1958, Woodrow Jones founded and the first major Black British newspaper, the West India Gazette, based in Bristol, England, advocating for the rights of first-generation migrants. It also brought news of independent struggles in the Caribbean and Africa. Woodrow Jones was a valiant fighter, fighting racism and imperialism, dedicating her life to the progress of the masses. She will not be forgotten. We're sending you forget me nots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You as we continue our struggles. You are our lights and our sister in arms forever. For you will always be remembered and loved. All you did and continue to do in spirit. We love you, Miss Jones. Thank you. Thank you very much, sister. <laughs> um, yeah, we're still having some technical difficulties, so passing things back and forth like that. And now we have next would be Mohsin Sadiq. Oh. So we do uh, have a little mix up here. Yeah, next would be uh, Katie Spillman will be next, and she'll. Um, Hello, my... oh, Katie. How you doing, Comrade? I'm well. How are you? I'm, I'm I'm wonderful. It's good to see you. You look well, happy, and everything. Yeah. Nice, happy. Katie, okay. I like that. Bringing that good spirit. I just want to say something, folks. It is a lot of things happening on the same month in February. It's Black History Month. Also, it's uh, Sister Claudia Jones' birthday. Uh, I think it'll be on Sunday or Monday. Mm -hmm. And um. There was one other thing about this, but but um, we'll come up to that. So yes, please um, introduce yourself the best way you want to, or however. Hello, everyone. I am Katie Spellman. I'm with the Claudia Jones School for Political Education, and it is my privilege to introduce our next speaking guest. Elise Bryant launched her labor arts career as the artistic director of the University of Michigan's Labor Theater Project, Workers' Lives, Workers' Stories in 1982. She joined the National Writers' Union and began screenwriting her screenwriting career with a script for the documentary Porgy and Bess, An American Voice, which aired last year on PBS. Elise is a lifetime member of the Wobblies, the industrial workers of the world, a member of the AFM Local 1000, as well as CWA Newspaper Guild Local 32035. In 2012, she, re she received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the United States, or excuse me, the United Association of Labor Educators. In 2017, she became president of the Coalition of Labor Union Women. And a month after that, she was elected vice president of the CWA TNG Local 32031. Comrades, please give a warm welcome to Elise Bryant. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. All righty. I am a union woman, just as strong as I can be. I do not like the bosses, and the bosses don't like me. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? You Tell me which side are you on? Which side are you on? Greetings, sisters, brothers, siblings, comrades, family. I bring you greetings from the Coalition of Labor Union Women and the Labor Heritage Foundation. I am so glad to be here to honor and celebrate the first year anniversary of the Claudia Jones School of Political Education. Yes because education is what drives me. As I was listening to Lucy and the Black Workers Center Chorus, I was reminded of why I sing or why I choose to open when I, with a song whenever I speak. Uh, when I went to South Africa back in uh, 2000, um, I went on a tour with a group of South African trade unionists from different uh, occupations uh, to different work sites in, or in and around Johannesburg. And we went to a steel mill and there was, I mean, it was a steel mill like nothing I'd ever seen before. I don't think I've ever been that close to steel, molten steel. Big, giant buckets of molten steel were 
flowing over and we were standing there and we could feel the heat from it. When we went outside, there was a brother out there by himself pulling slabs of steel off of that conveyor belt and into the yard and onto the ground. And as he was doing this work, we were gathering there watching him and my, my comrades from South Africa started singing and they sang as he was working. And when they were done, I turned to them and I said, uh, what was that song about? They said, oh, it was about like how the work is nasty and hard and the pay is low. And I thought, and you're just singing to them? Where in the United States would you go on a tour of any workplace where the group of people there would start singing? They sang at every coffee break, what they called it tea breaks. And when I asked them like, how do you know what part to sing? Because they always sing in four part harmony. How do you know what part to sing? They said, what do you mean part? I said, you know, soprano, tenor, alto, bass. They were like, um, no, nah, you just sing. And in that moment, I realized that I was not born in Africa. Africa was born in me. And we sing not to fulfill somebody's stereotype of singing Negroes in a minstrel show. We sing because when we sing together, we breathe together. And when we breathe together, we build collective power together. So sing with me. Oh, oh freedom, oh freedom, oh freedom over me. Over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be there and go home to my Lord and be free. I stand on the shoulders of Sojourner Truth who said, look at me, look at my arms. I have planted and plowed and gathered into barns and no man could hit me. I could eat as much and work as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all of them sold off into slavery. And when I cried out in my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me and ain't I a woman. And then that man over there in the black, he said that women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? He came from God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. And if the first woman that God made was able to turn this world upside down all by herself, these women here today ought to be able to get it back and turn it right side up. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. I stand on the shoulders of Ella Baker, who said, I'm a woman who speaks in a voice and I must be heard. Sometimes I can be quite difficult. I'll bow to no man's word. My ma clean home for the wealthy, scrubs floors on her hands and knees, taught me to fight for what you believe in, and education holds the key. Claudia Jones, political education. I stand on the shoulders of Blanche Garrett Bryant, my mother who said, change your underwear every day, girl. Get the house and the car in your name and never, ever cross a picket line. I stand on the shoulders of the ones who stepped off the slave ships, kissed the ground and willed us to be here. I stand on the shoulders of Lucy Parsons, Claudia Jones, Ida B. Wells. On whose shoulders do you stand? Can I have an ashe or amen or something? Let me know. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. We hear you. Ashe. Thank you. Thank you. We've been standing on the shoulders of Black women for generations. And now everybody's talking about Black women and the 2020 elections. Oh, this from CNBC. Black women continue to be the Democratic Party's most loyal group. This from USA Today. How black women work to secure Joe Biden's election. From the Philadelphia Inquirer, black women save democracy yet again. From the Washington Post, black women save the Democrats. Don't make us do it again. This election from the nation. 
This election, Black women are leading the way again, again, again. There is nothing new about this. Black women have been the backbone of the Black church since it was founded. The backbone of the civil rights movement, the backbone of the nation of Islam, the black backbone of the communist party. Today, we look at Stacey Abrams and Kamala Harris and we celebrate a victory, but what does it mean to the sister at the, at the cashier at the supermarket with no face mask? What does it mean to the thousands and thousands of black women who work every day of the pandemic, are homeschooling their children, taking care of one or both parents and fear that her son or daughter may be shot dead in the streets any day of the week? I lift up and celebrate every working sister out there. A celebration, comrades, is not enough. Our work is not over by any stretch of the imagination. We who believe in freedom cannot rest and we cannot do this alone. We need everybody, black, indigenous, people of color and white, old and young, LGBTQ, native and immigrant. And well, my friend John Froman said it beautifully. We need your friends and your neighbors poets and the painters, socialists and the communists, pacifists and the humanists. Every culture and community takes black and white and brown. Times we won't see eye to eye, but we stand on common ground. Gonna take us all to make a change. Take us all to win the peace. Take us all in the streets. Gonna take us all, gonna take us all. And I know, I know I am preaching to the choir. I know you, I know y'all out there. So let me close with this, the words of Claudia Jones, the unsung, anti-racist, feminist, communist, shero without a cape who said, it was out of my Jim Crow experiences as a young Negro woman experiences likewise born of working class poverty that led me to join the Young Communist League and to choose the philosophy of my life, the science of Marxism-Leninism. That philosophy not only rejects racist ideas, but it is the antithesis of them. Like so many black women, Claudia was left out of the history books, died too young, is laid next to Marx and yet Hardly anybody knows him, certainly in no schools. But clearly, we all understand that knowledge is power. So we must educate, mobilize, and organize for the future for our children and our children's children. Give honor to the First Nations people on whose land we all stand. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. That's why I get up every morning. We who believe in freedom cannot rest in the name of all those who went before us on whose shoulders we stand. Yes, it is so wonderful. There you go, my heart goes out. That was wonderful. And it's always great to see you. That's your heart. Yes, we have next coming up, it's going to be, um, comrade, um, what I believe is um, Mose. No. Uh, would be called, yeah. it would be called Gentle. And uh, he's going to give us a little fundraising pitch. We can uh, build up. We need to keep building, folks. Even in times of peril, we have to continue to move forward. Strive forward. Adelante. Ms. Henry. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. And I want to give a shout out to Elise because I remember in 2014, we had a trade union delegation to Cuba, which is always memorable and burns as a light in my mind forever. Um, Claudia Jones School for Political Education. We had many past events, beautiful, courageous events by sung and unsung heroes. 
following national events as well as international events in order to continue we really make to have to plea for some for some money okay to keep any organization afloat it takes some money so you can give anywhere from ten dollars to sixty dollars to a hundred dollars and there is really no ceiling. If you want to give more than that, it would be very appreciated. Like many people, if you are without funds and struggling, we understand. So no money is required, just your beautiful presence. And please, I conclude, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, please contribute as much as you can to the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Carl and the NAB was out. A very strong understanding of the movement. And uh, that's a good comment to put in bringing you this plea, basically, bringing you this plea uh, to help us out. Uh, we all going. We all are going through difficult times, and in this situation that we're in, we should find strength in each other, and use that strength to guide us throughout the days ahead. And so, if you can, please, please um, respond and contribute in some way. I mean, there's nothing too little, and there's nothing too much. I think whatever you feel in your heart you can do, uh, you would do it. I myself, I mean, uh, Deborah and myself <laughs> had decided that we was going to, even on our fixed income, that we were going to stretch it. We were going to make sure that we added something more than we've had before. And uh, we have situations so far as making sure we, we, we get things published. We get folks an opportunity to perform. All these things are included. And of course, in capitalism, none of it is free. So, uh, but you know, love is free. So if you love what you're hearing and what's gonna to continue to be happening uh, from your heart, give what you can give. And I thank you so much, Cole. And next on the program is um, a point and we're waiting for the particular poet to, to come here. Of course, I'm not sure if uh, Jaime's on the line. I don't know. Um, that was our next segment. And um, I would like to, um, to ask Dante if, uh, if uh, Compañero Francisco Campbell is still with us, because it's possible he could do a song or a poem for Nicaragua and for solidarity, international solidarity. And um, I, Francisco, if you're still there, uh, we'd love to hear some more of that uh, Nicaraguan spirit. So in the meantime, I think that um, I'm going to just play and Deborah's not going to play a little bit. And uh, Come take a journey with me, envision what could be, what shall be, free the spirit 
of the freedom to bring. Together, we will all march in solidarity and sing with me. Ain't nobody gonna turn us around song. We should aspire to be like that great spirit of Harriet Tubman, who once said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have it within your strength, the patience and the passion to, to reach for the stars, to change the world. Sorry, how you sing with me. The dastity of you, holding strong, staying true, the dastity to live your dreams for, for not profit, unyielding profit, not for the manufacturing consent or the exploitation, cornering every market around the globe with puppets of the middle class bourgeoisie and all their disease. What side are you on? You need to ask yourself, which side are you on? So come all of you, wonderful huddle masses. Good news to you, I tell them, of how the good old masses come to here at Tidwell. Because y'all didn't crawl or to sell your soul on a company store. Which side are you on? We must express our gratitude and our admiration and pay attention, pay attention and tribute and homage to our ancestors. Reflection on the way life used to be. Reflections of the way life used to be. Reflections of the way I came to be. For more than four scores ago, we were enslaved and our minds were engraved with the indignities of our enslavers. As slaves, many suffered from the cradle to the grave. Dr. Mudd, you should have healed yourself. My dear grandparents were freed slaves, owned and possessed like a garment or some kind of livestock. But they lived and was treated far better than their livestock, but not much better. The nature of capitalism matrix is based on eugenics, skills throughout our journey to reach these shores, scores were killed. Mr. Jim Crow and family keep eating from the trough of fruit and bread. Enough said, it's an, ideology, it's an ideological school for the unscrumptuous hidden agendas proliferating of profits, diamonds, gold, Uranium Grand Theft America Chorus sing with me. We sign on the road. We sign on the road. Come on, you wonderful masses. Let's lead. There's good news. And I'll tell you, there's some good news. I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. And as it is told, the global corporations wanted to sell your eternal soul. If you see me coming, you better step aside. A bunch of men didn't, didn't well, didn't do well, and a lot of them died. I got a fist of iron, and I got another fist of steel. If the right one don't get you, the left one will. Audacity of you, holding on strong, stay true. That's the view to believe in your dreams. Come take a journey with me. Come, come take a journey with me. The strength and the glory of our ancestors inspires courage through our stories. The stories of freedom fighters like Harriet Tubman, Martin and Malcolm and Paul Rose and Claudia Jones and W. Du Bois, Shawnee New Mitchell, Benjamin Davis, Penny New Hamer, Angela Davis, Claudia Lightfoot, Fred Hampton, all the world's lost voices and great freedom fighters of life. Say their names, say their names. That past, you know, certain, the tomorrow's being vain. Of course, let's sing. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. So America must Yes, more than four scores of guys. Stories were stolen from us. 
none of this. We moved, we were enslaved and our minds weren't great to be like Uncle Ben's and Aunt your mamas, who they say they changed the name, but they didn't really change it, of our world in order to, for the indignities of lost generations because they systemically erased our culture and history, but we still have them. We're bringing them back. Possessions like last stop, please. So here we go. Let me tell you, holding on strong, holding on, we shall overcome. There's no doubt that we shall overcome. And it's just like the tree that's planted in the water. We shall not be moved. I'm telling you now, a change has got to come. Oh, yes, it will. Let's hear our voice be heard. I hear the freedom and the liberation flow of all times. I hear the beautiful melodies of this rhyme. Free at last from prophets, external hunger, lust for the dollar they trust. We must sing gratitude and praise of our ancestors past. For now, let us take it further and forever. Our movement will last. Thank you, I was going on. Like I'm getting fired up. We can't take it no more. But I know we have the next person. I believe uh, Francisco Camel is going to come. And could someone bear me out on that? That we do have uh, the Nicaraguan Compañero ready to come on. Okay, I'm not receiving anything. Uh, other points and uh, don't make me bring it up. Well, you know, one of the things that um, is important is that when we talk about Claudia Jones, we talk about a sister that I don't know how to explain, but she was in boiling struggle. It's each way she turned, there was something, whether it was a, a she was going to court to fight uh, fascism. And, 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 and white supremacy, she was in the streets. When she was deported to Great Britain, she went and uh, landed in a, uh, she landed in a place where they had a history of all kinds of racial discrimination. Claudia went, when she was deported there, she took a tradition from Trinidad and from all over the Caribbean. And this is one thing is also uh, basically carnival time. And uh, when she went there in 1964, she uh, began um, a carnival. And the carnival has grown very large in, uh, in the streets of West London. Uh, and uh, it's, it's actually, she started it because uh, riding in and started racist attacks on uh, migrants, uh, folks from Africa, Caribbean, all over. And uh, it started in Nottingham Hill. And from that uh, came the carnival time that she started there. And today it's one of the largest uh, carnivals that happened, not just in uh, England, but throughout Europe now. So it is a, a wonder that, uh, that we, we survive and we continue to create and have folks understand and celebrate with us. So in saying that, um, I would like us, hopefully in the future, to be able to do carnival time here, to bring back the carnival in D.C. Uh, and we would uh, more than likely be one of the spearheads behind it. So then if you wanted to, to donate, keep in mind those are the kind of things we are planning to do. And it will help us greatly to make sure that we can fund these things and as well, all the musicians that can come forth to you are, are working class musicians. So we got to provide some, you know, reimbursement for their talent and their time. Because we sure going to shake it up. We're going to shake it up. So I'm just saying it again. If you have an opportunity in the next few minutes, the next hours, please go to that number 
It sounds like I'm at WPFW now. But, <laughs> and call that number up and, and, and please give a, give a contribution, give a donation to the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. So I would like to uh, hear as Den if Dante can come and uh, speak before we end the program. All right. uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you coming. All right. What's up, everyone? Um, Dante here. Uh, for folks who do not know me, um, yeah, I'm also an organizer with the Claudia Jones School for Political Education. And I do want to thank everyone who participated in the program today, um, especially to you, Gato, for emceeing um, for this evening's events. Uh, Carl, Katie, um, Elise, who just dropped off for her union meeting, uh, Mohsin, uh, Ambassador Campbell, uh, the Black Workers Course, um, and our tech support in the background. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, showing out. Um, I did want to share something quickly before I go into announcements. Um, our program will be ending a little bit early tonight because um, I think we didn't expect uh, some of these segments to be so short, but... Um, uh, that's okay. Um, it's Friday. So uh, give me one second here. I wanted to share this. Oops. So I think this person may be on the call, but it's from Annabelle Heckler, um, some arts, and I did want to share it. Um, I don't know if uh, they want to um, be added as a panelist and say some few words about um, their art, but I will share on the screen. Um, Rob, who's our tech person, can see if they can add them as a panelist and see if they want to say a few words. I think they're in the attendee section, um, but I did want to share their artwork um, about Claudia. Apologies for seeing my tabs, but um, this is extremely beautiful work. I did want to give some space for it because this is uh, extremely beautiful. Um, about Claudia's role in the carnival in London and, um, you know, a little bit of art about her life. Um, and we hope to put this on our website uh, soon, sooner rather than later. So, um, yeah, I did want to give space to Annabelle if uh, uh, Rob can, yeah, Rob's asking me. Rob, is Annabelle um, in, the, in the participants? There you go. I don't know if Annabelle, you're willing to speak on your art. I wanted to give you some space to do that if you're able. And apologies if you walked away from your computer, but. Uh, yeah, I could, I could just speak for a quick second and say thank you so much to everybody. Um, yeah, this, uh, yeah, I'm so glad that this school exists and Claudia Jones has been an inspiration and a light to me for um, many, many years of my life. And um, yeah, so made this little comic as like a piece of love and devotion to her and how wise she is in sort of bringing intersectional politics to all of us um, today. And yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah we, we just wanted to give space to the artists and uh, thank folks for submitting. Uh, we also have some video submissions from, I believe, uh, one of our friends in Canada, who I believe is from Britain as well. Um, I did want to share one of the videos. Let me see if I can pull that up and then uh, give me a second here. Sorry, y'all. Um, so this literally just came in like a few minutes ago. But I'm just gonna share one of them and see. Let me see if I can blow this up on the screen. Okay, let me know if y'all can't see it, but I did wanna give the space to folks that submitted some stuff for our school. Hello, my name is Annette Pateman and I'm going to read you a poem called The Land from my book, Love Lines. The Land. The land was old and wily. Spirits roamed over the deeps of the faced. 
Some were benevolent, a soothing patient touch, remembering kind hands and soft voices that needed the loams of their hearts, planted and pulled out weeds. The angry spirits, their maws open in a not silent scream, gave clods of dry earth from which nothing planted came. Their dutty broke backs and shovels. Their soils dust became. This land now willed to those who don't understand it, who poke and prod and take from it while giving nothing back. The angry spirit, more open, able to lay in wait for centuries with basilisk stone eye half closed. If you take and take, then I will seal your fate. And unto me, like dust, you shall return. I will await my turn. Dutty is an African word for earth. Thank you. All right, so uh, yeah, I just wanna give some space to folks that the submissions and um, uh, thank you so much. Um, and if uh, you're on the call, appreciate you. I, I know you're with us um, at our poetry night. Um, uh, and yeah, I just want to sh show the space. And uh, it looks like you're on the call too. So I don't know if you want to say some words. Um, Velvet, I don't know if Rob, you want to add them in. Hello. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, thank you so much for watching my, um, my submission. Um, I'm just taking this phone upstairs. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a bit stunned to be on here, but that's wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just so glad that you that you listened. Um, but um, yeah, I was online and um, I came across the Claudia Jones School um, because I saw my cousin um, that you featured her. Oh dear, please bear with me. Maybe you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me. Be, yeah, bear with me, please. Um, because I seem to have lost your, lost the, uh, the screen. Okay, um, I think it's coming back. Okay, um, yes, my, co my cousin is Olive Morris. Um, and um, I was on Instagram and I saw her, that, you, that, that uh, the, the Claudia Jones, school were featuring some things I just saw her picture and I thought oh my goodness they've got they've got they've got Olive Morris's picture and she's my cousin so my dad had a sister called um oh uh, my, my dad had a sister called Doris uh, my dad was a Mosley and he had a sister called um Doris Mosley his elder sister and she had um she was the mother of o Olive Morris so um I grew up a new Olive Morris very, very well. And uh, she was obviously a little bit older than me. She was quite, quite you know, a fair bit older than me. And we were at uh, the hospital uh, uh, in Olive's last days in London. Um, and she's a feminist and an activist. And um, she has been featured um, on, on your, on, on, you know, by the Claudia Jones School. And it was when I saw the picture come up on my feed that I, that I uh, became a little bit more involved with um, the, the Claudia Jones School. And um, I've done one or two things, you know, uh, for you. And um, then I saw the link to say that it was your first anniversary. So I knew I had to submit something. I knew it was a bit late. I've been doing, I live in Thunder Bay in, in Canada. And um, I've been uh, doing quite a lot of events for Black History Month, which has been, excellent excellent for me as an independently published poet and writer 
And um, so it's been busy, um, but it, but I was really pleased. So I thought that I'd given those things in very late, but I'm so glad that, that you picked them up and that you were able to, uh, to showcase, um, to showcase the, the, the poem. So I <laughs> yeah, pre appreciate you. I, I had to give you some space to yeah, say some words and I, I know there's more videos than just the one. So if, yes. if you're okay with that, we'll post on our social media and uh, showcase some of the work if you're okay with oh that. please do i'd be very very happy very happy and it's awesome. been fabulous very interesting listening to listening to the the show thank you so much thank you there was one more person in the attendees i was wondering if they'd be interested in uh saying some words uh nena amuchi um curious if uh if you're still on um if you'd like to say some words i don't know if rob can add them into the Panelists, uh, Nena. And then this last person I'm putting on the spot. So <laughs> I just want to see if Nena uh, will be willing to say some words. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Wow. Okay. I was not prepared for this. Um, just want to say congratulations. I was just like tweeting how I found out about the Claudia Jones um, School of Public uh, Political Education. And, um, you know, I met Gato at the, this public library in Northeast. <laughs> and I was like, I've been reading so much history, so many like heady books. Let me go to the library and get some more like black fiction, uh, like black queer fiction and like by women writers. And so I had like this big stack of like books. And um, I think I may have, have had a shirt, maybe it was like a BYP 100 shirt or something that maybe said freedom. And so Gato was like, hey, like, I think um, you would like really enjoy this person or something. And it was a flyer that said Claudia Jones, uh, uh, like the festival that he was like kind of uh, trying to revive here in DC. And um, so we start talking and I was like really excited cause I'm like, oh my gosh, you know I am just starting to learn about Claudia Jones but also like she's so slept on. So it was like really exciting to hear that somebody like knew who she was and was an elder and in DC. And I'm like, oh, why haven't we met? Like what type of organizing are you doing? And so uh, he's told her telling me a little bit about his work and I said, we have to connect. And then like eventually we connected and I invited you to a um, black organizing dinner. Um, and that's where, or no, I invited you to a teach-in. We were having like abolition, no new jails teach-ins. And so you came and also Rick and Michelle came and that was the first time y'all had seen each other in like 15 years. <laughs> so it was just a very transformational experience. And I got to meet Deborah, um, and, you know, later got to meet Dante and so, um, it's just been really uh, amazing to see y'all grow and really, you know, do what's necessary in this moment, which is like create spaces uh, for us to struggle together, create spaces of learning, um, create intergenerational spaces for us to like have this continuity that is like oftentimes, um, you know, what the state wants is to like chop up history and act like we have to reinvent the will or that, you know, whatever one sector of people may know more than other, but it's really humbling to be in these spaces as um, we figure this shit out. And so congratulations, really happy to be, uh, you know, uh, share space with y'all and be a part of this and um, learn and, and learn a lot from y'all. So congratulations. Thank you. Yay. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much, Nana. And yeah, I appreciate all the support you've given us uh, the past year uh, and hope, hope to keep developing that relationship beyond this. So, um, so with that also, uh, we are hosting an event on AFRICOM, uh, the US Central Command, Military Command in Africa on the continent uh, this upcoming Monday. And then is actually uh, one of the moderators for the events uh, Monday night, the 22nd, uh, we'll be hosting uh, folks from uh, Black Alliance for Peace, um, Ajama Baraka and uh, Maurice Carney from uh, Friends of the Congo. Um, so check that out. Um, we are co-sponsoring with the Peace and Solidarity Commission of the Communist Party. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there'll be a, a good turnout. And I think uh, folks, a lot of folks probably on this call know about AFRICOM, but I think a lot of folks out there don't know much about it. And uh, we need to continue uh, educating our folks about what's happening um, uh, with imperialism and, you know, these new forms of colonialism on the continent and such. So, um, 
anyways, with that, um, I think we should wrap up. Um, thank you for all of your uh, time and attention tonight. This is a beautiful, uh, inspiring event. Um, we're going to have more um, once we're back in person. Um, you know, y'all will see this all in person uh, once again, like we had last February at the uh, Nicaraguan Embassy, and uh, we'll be you know, hopefully have an, our own space this fall. Um, we're in talks with getting our, our own space um, and uh, also developing relationships with uh, the embassies, um, with obviously left governments. And then, um, yeah, just kind of becoming a force in DC, hopefully uh, with this popular education project. So appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you, Lucy, again, and the uh, Black Workers Chorus. I don't know if y'all are still on the call, if they, they want to say anything. Um, Thank you to everyone that was involved. Thank you for the tech support, Rob, and other folks. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. There's more events coming up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hey, the rainbows. Oh, it was it was great being with you. We'll see you Monday. Yeah. yeah, I want one of those, uh, I want one of those hoodie t-shirts. Nice. Yeah. Thank you.